I would strongly suggest get out of the city. Why leave? I'm like embarrassed to share this. It's really crazy. Ah! I left LA. I really left LA. I always said I would never leave LA. I always said it was LA or bust. I left LA after living in Los Angeles for over 10 years. And let me tell you, it was the best thing I ever did. And here are all the reasons why you should too. What's up guys, I'm Ashley Bornanson. Thanks so much for tuning into this video. This is for all the people who are living in the city and who might be drained and questioning their lives and really considering, should I stay or should I go? I'm gonna spill all the tea on all the reasons why I think you should leave the city and stick around to the end because you're gonna hear my main reason why I left and I'm so much happier. These are definitely things I think you should consider in making the transition. First off, my time in Los Angeles, I built a successful acting career in voiceover, did commercials, was a producer on a TV show, worked in casting, kind of did it all. I've had all the experience from all the different sides and I really fell in love. Like I love the city so much, the city brought me so much joy, just the feeling of so much opportunity each day, truly. I mean, you don't get that in that many places besides a big city like that, especially for someone who obviously wants to work in entertainment. There's just an energy of everyone just living out their dreams that they had. And for a while, it was like an adrenaline. There was a high. There, it, every time you would get a role or do really well in an audition or whatever it is, it's like a hit of dopamine. You're like, oh my God, oh my God. And it just keeps you going. So that really kind of like helps create that momentum that makes you end up staying in the city. But there are many reasons to consider leaving to create a better life. And I hope I free some of you guys from potential pressure or fear that might be keeping you from staying in the city versus wanting to actually have that desire to stay in the city. So first off, it's what everyone's gonna talk about and that is it's expensive. It is so expensive for what you get. I'm, I have lived everywhere in the city pretty much. Um, I lived in the Valley, Burbank, Glendale, North Hollywood. I also lived downtown. I also live near the beach, one block up from the beach. So I've kind of had all the experiences. First off, the cost of living is truly outrageous. And the amount of money that you're gonna end up paying for the type of lifestyle you want is exorbitant. Exorbitant? For a studio, you're gonna end up paying probably around $1,600 to $2,300 for a one bedroom, $2,400 or more starting. For a two bedroom, you're looking at probably close to starting at $3,000. And that is all dependent on where you live, but honestly, those numbers are even for really crappy apartments in the valley. So for what you're paying, you can be living a life of luxury in so many other states and cities that are so interesting with incredible people that you really have to consider, is it really worth paying so much out of my pocket and my paychecks each week just to be able to survive in very tiny, very tiny places? And places that you probably can't do a lot of the creative things that that you could do in other areas, just having more space, just having better amenities. You have really high insurance. My car insurance was over, guys. This is, I can't even, I'm like embarrassed to share this. My car insurance was over $350 on a Honda Accord. No, God, please, no, no! Where I live now, it's about 100 a month, which is so much better. You're probably not owning a home. If you're trying to own a home in LA, shacks that are like, gross shacks in the valley will start at more likely half a million dollars. If you have to pay for parking, it, when I lived downtown, I had to pay about $200 for parking. And then gas is incredibly expensive. And most of the time, if you're working in the entertainment industry, you are driving 
so much. So you're gonna be using a lot of gas and then of course, all of the prices on all of the different things that involve your vehicle. Another one. You obviously wanna be in good shape, so you're gonna pay for some sort of gym membership and most of the ones that are, you know, clean and nice are probably gonna be around anywhere between one and $250 a month. The price of food on groceries is so much more when you go out. I could not believe where I live now that drinks are probably one fourth the cost of LA. I was so used to getting a drink for around, starting at $15, but going up from there, more like 20 bucks for a cocktail. You add that plus dinner, you are spending so much money going out, you're probably taking a lot of Ubers. It's a lot. You have to consider what you're willing to give up because something's gotta give, right? And if you work in the entertainment industry, what you're doing with your finances is constantly investing back in, which is what we should be doing. We should be constantly investing back into ourselves to better ourselves, to continue building our futures and careers. Kind of like dress for the job you want, not the job you have. It's always kind of a balance, like should I, pay a really expensive rent to have my own place or should I get a roommate and be able to take the classes that I need to take or be able to go to my networking events. So there are so many give and takes when it comes to how to spend your money. You can't do it all. Stop it, get some help. Time is money and something that is gonna suck a lot of your time and you know this if you currently live in LA and it's something to really consider is obviously the traffic. When I say traffic, we're talking about hours and hours out of your day. It would take me hours to get to the other side of town. So I would be driving on a typical day. I can honestly say I was probably driving about five hours a day, which is just outrageous to me now. <laughs> It's really crazy. And you try to do all the things. Like for me, I listen to podcasts. I would listen to books on tape. I would take all my calls and that really helped the time go by. But you really don't see how much time that is actually taking out of your day and how much more you could be doing and how much more energy you could have if you're not wasting all of your time in traffic. I was one of my first friends to leave LA. It was kind of a snowball effect where my lease was up, my relationship was over, pandemic relationship fell through, oh well. You're better off, am I right, folks? I was just left at the altar, so <laughs> this is the face of. Not really, but sure. It kind of became a ripple effect among everyone where the pandemic really showed us what kind of quality of life we wanted to have. So I had to fly back to LA for a few different projects that I had to film or record. And I flew back a couple times and then I also came back a few weeks ago for one of my best friend's weddings. And when I went back to do those projects that was fall of 2020, it was so exciting. It was. So exciting, but yet so different because I love going into LA, doing work, seeing your friends, and then getting out. That's the most fun part. But when I came back a few weeks ago, what's interesting is that the pandemic also, because of the shutdown and because of so much that happened to the city because of the shutdown, the city lost its shine. And it's not just me who feels this way. A lot of my friends who still work there or are commuting into the city or flying back into the city for projects said they feel this way too. The city isn't really glamorous anymore. It kind of lost its hype. You know, all of the things that kind of make the city special, like the entertainment industry and billboards and the different opportunities and the beach and nightlife, all of that stopped for many, many months. So what we started to see is, if you are driving down Sunset Boulevard, you see that so many of the shops are closed down. You see for rent everywhere. You see how dirty the streets are. You see the air. What's really, really sad is because of the pandemic, I don't wanna cry, but I have such a heart for the city and I lived right downtown. So I have 
a really big heart for all of the different people and all of the different cultures of Los Angeles. And what the pandemic did was it took out a lot of jobs. And because of that, you really saw the wage gap between um, the different classes of people in Los Angeles. And because the middle class lower income brackets weren't obviously bringing in revenue or they lost their jobs, tent cities started forming all over, all over LA. So, so you might have seen some tents on Skid Row obviously and some other places, but tent cities started popping up everywhere. And it really was very sad to see and it's just overtaking the city. You know, Silver Lake Reservoir was completely filled with tents. All of the bridges under North Hollywood and a lot of the streets even in West Hollywood and leading right up to Beverly Hills is now Tent City and still is that way. And it just started being like, why is everyone paying so much money to live in this city when most of the opportunities are remote anyway? Made it really hard to to be around that because there was so much devastation that it felt like why are, why are we even here the idea of expectations meets reality and what actually is going to be the expectation of either the career or lifestyle that you're seeing on social media that you're seeing even on like Facebook and among your friends versus the actual reality, I noticed that a lot of people on, on social media are obviously liars. They are building up a lifestyle that just isn't the full picture. Some of it might be true, but a lot of it probably isn't. You know, you probably have an influencer who's getting free shoes, but you don't see that they're also nannying and working at Starbucks in the mornings. You see, your actor friends, maybe some of them are booking guest stars or or even booking a pilot, but you don't see that they were out of work for six months. Most people are not telling the full story of the journey, and I think if a lot more people did tell that story, there would be less of a gap between expectations versus reality. And unfortunately, they don't want to tell the full story because a lot of times casting directors or agents or or people they work with are following them or would see and you kind of need to keep up this lifestyle in order to play the game. So it's really hard to get honest answers from people like, hey, what does this actually take? The reality is really missing in that city. So a lot of people just have a very construed view of how it actually is and the hard work it actually takes to build a sustainable career and all of the things that you have to sacrifice. A major factor is also that, especially those first years, 90% of your time or 95% of your time, you're going to be doing all of the things that is not actually why you came out there. You know, if you're an actor or singer, or dancer, or whatever it is, um, you might be doing that for part of the time, but a lot of the time you're just, you know, trying to build income, pay your rent, you know, just be able to survive. And the question that I pose to you is, are you in a situation right now where you're surviving or thriving? And on, on, what's the thriving threshold? Like, where are you on that threshold? And again, is it worth the quality of life that you are getting in Los Angeles? Or can you build a much better quality of life doing what you love to do in another city that's a little bit more lifestyle friendly. You know what I mean? Also the freelance expectation. I don't think a lot of people realize, but almost everyone is working freelance or you know what some people might call is contract work. I'm talking about even casting directors, directors, even producers. A lot of producers that aren't employed by a production company full time they are hustling to produce their next project to then create their income. So there are a lot of different freelance expectations that you have to kind of be okay with. And if you're not someone who loves that lifestyle of not necessarily living paycheck to paycheck, but going from project to project and hustling for your next project, and a lot of the time is the hustle in between each project, then 
the city is definitely going to wear on you if you're working in the entertainment industry because almost all of the jobs are contract jobs. If you're in LA, a very wise thing to do is to definitely consider creating multiple streams of income. I don't know why anyone wouldn't do that. A lot of people say, oh, I just want to make money only off acting, but even actors, you know, A-list actors, are building their own makeup lines and building their own products and they're always having multiple streams of income why do you think a lot of actors are now producing and having their own production companies they're not doing that just for fun they're doing that because it brings in more money so to be someone who only wants to make money in one specific way i think is very limiting and you should focus on creating multiple streams of income but that is definitely something that can weigh on you in the city which is those freelance expectations i feel like i could potentially get a lot of hate for this one but this is just straight up the truth la is not the place to have relationships and when i say relationships i mean romantic relationships it people do not come there to get married People do not come there to have kids and build the picket fence. Most of the priorities that people have going into the city are not to find a loved one and get married. And I think we have to be really real with ourselves of, am I putting myself in the situation that's going to result in the outcome that I'm looking for? Or am I just living in this false sense of reality because I like the weather and I like hiking that people the majority of people with these priorities are going to align with me. Of course, there are going to be exceptions. Of course there are, right? Like there's gonna be an exception to every rule, but for the most part, I have had and have tr truly the most gorgeous friends that are so kind, hardworking, beautiful inside and out. And so many of them, myself included in LA, just really did not have much success in finding a really strong relationship and mind you I'm gonna throw something else into the equation which is we also were in the Christian community which is a lot of groups going to Bible studies and going to church and all of that and while all of that is really great you would think that you would find more people who who were seeking that but in LA that just is not the priority so if you are someone who really wants that and is coming to that time where you're like just not finding it in LA, I would strongly, this is huge, I would strongly suggest you leave because in so many other states in the country, you will find that, you just will. Probability of you meeting someone who wants that in a state that really nourishes that and respects it, Los Angeles is not a kid-friendly city. It is, it's also just not a city for partners, if you are someone who this is truly on your heart and you feel like now's the time to really build a relationship, I would strongly suggest get out of the city. I also found that there were a lot of guys who wanted the benefits of a relationship but didn't want to commit to a relationship and the culture of Los Angeles is self-centered. It just is. And this is coming from someone who loves the city and loves the people that I still know and work with in the city, the culture is not a culture that is all for one and one for all. The culture is I, me, I want to be famous, me, 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 me. It just is. It just is. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, it's just the truth. In a way, you kind of can't blame anyone for that culture because you kind of have to be. You're going to need to sacrifice a lot to build a career in the city and if you don't really focus on that then you might not ever be able to achieve that if you're spreading yourself too thin trying to also have a successful relationship trying to have kids or or do all the things all at once you probably are not going to be able to do that so in a way you can't blame people for being self-centered but on the other hand it is sad for the people that do fall into that trap, which is probably all of us at some point, because it is not a sustainable mindset. It's not one that's going to be fulfilling and it's not one that is purpose-driven. And I'm all about being purpose-driven on this channel, as you know. And something to consider is, do you have community there that's supporting you, challenging you, encouraging you, and can show up for you? Because so much obviously about life is showing up for each other and helping each other. And 
whether people want to or not, people just don't do that as much in Los Angeles as a whole. It just happens way less and is there somewhere that you could probably find that way better. All right guys, I promised I would save the best for last and here is the number one reason that I left Los Angeles. The pandemic, for better or worse, truly changed the game. In a positive way, it made people see that they don't have to be in Los Angeles to have a successful, thriving, not only career, but happy life. And when that started to happen, when everything started to go remotely, all of the auditions started turning remote. They were already getting very remote. You know, if, if you're an on-camera actor, you were already probably sending in a lot of self-tapes. Well, then it went to full self-tapes and voiceover went to completely from your home studio to the point where you are now doing sessions from your closet. You are doing sessions for major studios from your closet. And if you're an agent or your casting director, you're doing all of that from your home. Or if you're a producer, you're doing Skype meetings. You're a writer, now you're doing writer's room meetings. You know, so much of the industry changed and so many parts of the industry are going to stay changed. It saves a ton of money. And something to consider is that why do you think all these people and productions and big showrunners are leaving Los Angeles? It's because they have a better quality of life elsewhere and they can still do what they love. And I am so, so passionate about this, especially for people who are just staying in the city because they're running the rat race and maybe they've been doing it for many years, even ones who've been really successful, but they just don't wanna be in the city anymore. You can love a city and love an industry and just get sick of it. Maybe you're drained. Maybe you're like, I just don't wanna be in traffic anymore. You know, there's so many different reasons and I'm here to tell you that that's okay and that you should listen. You should listen to yourself and your actual desires. It's okay for your desires to change as you grow up. It's okay to want a different perspective, a different quality of life, maybe a career shift. It's okay to make a change versus maybe what you started wanting when you were 18 years old. And I think a lot of people feel like if I do this, it's gonna feel like, it's gonna seem like I gave up on my dreams, but it's not that at all. It's that your life is shifting and your priorities are shifting and the best thing is that not only in Los Angeles, but throughout the entire country and world, so much has gone remote or has had the capability where you can mostly work remote, fly in, drive in, whatever it is, that now you can truly live the life of your dreams. If you are in the situation where you have been going back and forth of I'm gonna miss an opportunity if I leave the city or I'm going to not be able to ever achieve this if I do that, but you are really feeling the pull to make a change, I say do it. Do it baby girls and boys and don't look back because you are following your calling and that calling is going to lead to you being on the journey of your purpose. And whether that calling brings you back to Los Angeles or not, it really doesn't matter because it's your calling. So you are exactly where you need to be. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you were empowered. I just try to keep it real, give you my honest perspective of the city, the pros and the cons and reasons why I personally think you should leave. But that's just me. For myself too, I had a really big calling on my heart to entirely, for the most part, change industries and do something I really love. And I'm going to be sharing more of that coming up, but it led me to an entirely new zip code and I'm still able to do so many of the things and projects I love in Los Angeles. As you know, we have our company Voice Masters that I'm so passionate about too that is completely virtual. For anyone wanting to learn more about voiceover, definitely click the links below in my description and we'll get you all the information on that. All right guys, if you haven't already, what are you doing? Hit the red subscribe button below for weekly videos every week. Turn on the notifications button so you never miss a video and I'll see you next time.